This week on The Splash. Join us as we attend a holiday-themed art show over at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Then get to know some of the students involved in West Broomfield School District's radio station. And later, we talk with former mayor and lifelong Sylvan Lake resident, Ray Dahlgren. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories. All so that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into the Splash. Hello and welcome to the Splash. I'm your host, Jonathan Jackson, and as always, it's good to have you with us. Over in the city of Orchard Lake, art vendors of all kinds were invited to show off their work at the Holiday Craft Blast at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. So we sent over Splash reporter Ben Goldman to see what kind of artwork was being put out on display. The St. Mary's Holiday Craft Show provided local Michigan artists an opportunity to show off their wide array of paintings, sculptures, woodwork, and other handmade crafts. This is a holiday craft fair and we're looking to bring arts back to St. Mary's and give people the opportunity to shop for unique, handmade, one-of-a-kind items and familiarize themselves with some of the local artists in the metro area. This is the first year of this show. St. Mary's has had art events in the past, about 10 years ago, and um, they're looking to revive some of the arts and culture. For Karen, the mission to revive the local arts is a personal one. Uh, I'm an artist. I've shown an art prize and won awards, so I just like to promote the arts and be involved with the arts and share the arts. <laughs> The opportunities presented at the craft show are not just impacting West Bloomfield, they're impacting artists all throughout Michigan. It's bringing um, Michigan artists, everyone here is a Michigan artist except maybe one that's from Ohio, and so it's bringing Michigan artists to a community um, that appreciates the arts and um, sharing that love with each other. <laughs> And that love of the arts was definitely felt here at the St. Mary's Holiday Craft Show. Reporting for The Splash, this is Ben Goldman. Thanks, Ben. And if you'd like to see more from this year's craft show, then go and visit our website at civiccentertv.com slash holidaycraftblast. We here at Civic Center TV love listening to WBLD 89.3 Lakes FM. And if you live in the area yourself, well, you've more than likely heard our station playing over the airwaves. But what you may not know are the voices and the talent behind the station. Here's the Splash's Katie Wozniak with the details. Here in West Bloomfield, the school district's radio station is 89.3 Lakes FM. The station, which has been around for over 40 years, has close ties with the students at the school, including high school senior Brandon Crawford, who serves as the program director for Lakes FM. So as program director, I select the music that you hear on the radio, both old and new. I schedule the radio station music. So every couple days, I will come in to the station and make what are called logs, which it goes through day by day, minute by minute actually, uh, what will be played. My favorite part about coming to the radio station is getting to hear new music and airing that music on the radio station so that everyone can enjoy it. In addition to music, the station also broadcasts the West Bloomfield High School football games. To help commentate, they brought on two other high schoolers, Jake Cohen and Vivov Velgapudi. Um, last year, I listened to a few games on the lakesfm.com, and I was just interested. One of my friends, Justin Fromer, was doing it, so he was a senior last year. So once he left, Jake and I bounced ideas off each other, and then, you know, we just emailed our principal, Mr. Watson. He gave us the email of Dave Scott, who works here, and he just set us up with everything that we needed. And, we got on air the first week of football and we just picked up from there. And I think it's a, a burgeoning station and I think it has a bright future. Last year definitely I was really, it was really fortunate for me to have it. You know, I was able to listen to some games that I couldn't make it to and definitely this year that's a big thing. I think a lot of the guys that we know, we've been trying to spread the news about this station and try to get it going with some of our friends and they're, they're definitely picking up on it and definitely games that they can't make it to, they're listening to us. So that's just bringing the name up for the station. Sophomore and freshman, I always like with Vibe of we 
I would say like we did audio messages, which is kind of funny for games, like and just to mess around. We never really thought that we'd end up being commentators. Like we talk about it a little bit, but I never really thought I'd like open up to actually do it this year, and now I am. This station really has provided me with a place to start for radio, and also it's great to pave my path for the future. To hear more from Brandon, Jake, and Vibov, tune into 89.3 Lakes FM or visit lakesfm.com. For The Splash, I'm Katie Wozniak. Thank you, Katie. And thanks also to the guys over at 89.3 Lakes FM for participating in this week's segment. And to see more footage from them, well, you can go to civiccentertv.com slash WBLD. Coming up, though, we've got a lot more to show you on this week's episode, including an interview with local chef Annabelle Cohen of Cook's Detroit. And right after the break, stay tuned for our heartwarming feature on one of Sylvan Lake's oldest living residents. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Civic Center TV celebrates our region's natural beauty, proud history, tremendous accomplishments, and more with Another Angle, a series featuring a unique bird's eye view of our area's landscape. Watch Another Angle on Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Civic Center TV has gone social. Now it's easier than ever to watch, save, like, and share our videos online. See what's happening in your neighborhood, on the streets, and on the web at civiccentertv.com. Be a part of the conversation and get involved. We would love to hear from you. For links to our social media pages, visit us at our website or find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. The best way to know when shows debut on Civic Center TV is to become a member. It's absolutely free. We'll send you a regular newsletter with all the latest updates. Just go to civiccentertv.com and click the Members tab. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to the splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to the splash. I'm your host, Jonathan Jackson. With today's easy access to travel and transportation, most people end up living in more than one area throughout their lives. But for this next resident, he's only had one place to call home, and that's the city of Sylvan Lake. Here's the Splash's David Glazer with a story. Since he was a year old, Ray Dahlgren has been living in the city of Sylvan Lake. And looking back, he's seen it change dramatically in the past 80 years. When we moved here, there were roads, but they were, they were not paved and we didn't have a water system that was doable, you know, at the time. But things were always well maintained here. Even when he was little, Ray's parents were both well known throughout the community, especially his father. My dad had his office in Kegel Harbor. He was a physician and uh, he didn't charge much of anything. It, it was a, a different period back then. Although he admits being a troublemaker, Ray got along well with his school's principal, Glenn Husted, who he often looked up to. He's a real fine man. He uh, gave, of, gave of himself every time there was a need to, sometimes when there wasn't a need to, and uh, just, just a fine man. Ray was involved in Boy Scouts growing up and preferred being outdoors rather than playing sports. In Boy Scouts, you had, we had weekend camping trips. We had all kinds of activities. They taught us how to prepare meals. And scouting was real active back in those years. After attending grade school, Ray served in the Vietnam War as a medical officer. I was a commissioned officer in the Army, and I was stationed at Fort Sam Houston in Texas for a while. And uh, I liked it, but it, it gave me a, a better outlook of what some of the rest of the world w was like. Ray even became the mayor of Sylvan Lake and admits that he enjoyed being in office, but was glad once it was all over. Yeah, I was the mayor a couple of years. It's a good city. People like one another. There's not a lot, a whole lot of problems. It's it just, it's a good place to live. Reporting for The Splash, I'm David Glazer. Thanks, David. And if you'd like to see more from this segment, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash Ray Dahlgren. But it's time now for us to move on to another of our Splash segments, Sidewalk Talk, 
where our very own George Moore discusses topics at random with residents here in Greater West Bloomfield. George Moore for Sidewalk Talk. You know, people have what they call a bucket list of things they want to do with their life, uh, whether it be adventurous or traveling. And our intention out here today is to find out what's the number one item on your bucket list. Do you have an item, number one item, on your bucket list? I have a lot of items on my bucket list. What's the top? Um, really to just travel the world. Yeah. Yes, to take my kids to Yosemite. That would be something we need to, to get in before they go off on their own. Create a happy home for children. All right. I, I, I had a happy home as a child. I'd like to give that back. Hmm, I think skydiving. I know that's a pretty popular one, but I'd like to experience it at least once. Well, so you like doing the safe stuff, right? <laughs> that's how you describe it. I think I'd like to go to a street luge somewhere. That'd be so cool. Wouldn't that be fun? A street yeah. luge? Everyone should do a street luge. Yeah, okay, adventurous. I yeah. Like the number one item on my bucket list. Um, I don't know if I have a number one item. I guess a, a trip to Costa Rica would be high up there. It's something that my wife and I have been talking about for a while. My wife, Allie, we've been wanting to go to Costa Rica. I'd love to go to Costa Rica. I would like to visit the island of Nantucket. Okay. Absolutely. I've been reading a couple of travel books about it. Uh, the history, the whale industry, the, the beauty. Um, I want to go there. Um, ski a place called Powder Country, which is like knee-high deep powder. Where's that at? It's in Utah. It's in Powder Mountain. Skydiving. It's just something that is really interesting. A bunch of my friends have already done it, so it's I guess it's just time, almost time for me to go do it. So. <laughs> so you finally convinced yourself you want to do this? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. Well, just watch the first step. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Once again, we feel that you have sufficiently answered the question. So until next time, I'm George Moore. Sidewalk Talk. Another of our favorite episodes from the one and only George Moore, who's always gave us some of the greatest questions to ask you, the community. But if you haven't seen them for yourself, then go check them out on our website at civiccentertv.com slash sidewalk talk. Now it's time for a Civic Center event update. And to stay up to date on all the following current events, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash events. So without further ado, let's get started. First off, a reminder, the West Bloomfield Trail is still closed at the first Orchard Lake Crossing just south of Pontiac Trail. For more information on how long and what else we can expect from this development, call 248-451-1900. On Thursday, October 20th, the 2016 Senior Health and Wellness Expo, in partnership with West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation, will provide education and tools for fulfilling a well-focused life. Enjoy health talks from clinical experts, local vendors, and a Detroit Institute of Arts presentation. Due to availability, lunch vouchers will only be provided to the first 200 attendees. Also, there is free on-site registration, but you must do so either then or beforehand. You can even contact the West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation Commission at 248-451-1900 to register early. On Thursday, October 20th, meet naturalist Lauren Azuri in the West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation Nature Room to start your Halloween celebrations early. From 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., learn about animals that have a spooky reputation and make some slime to take home and dissect owl pellets to find animal bones. This is a family program for those aged 3 or older, and a registration fee is required for both children and adults. The cost is $7 for residents and $12 for non-residents. For more information, go to the West Bloomfield Parks and Rec website or call 248-451-1900. If you live along or drive through Cass Lake Road in Kego Harbor, remember there is still a road closure near the Magnolia by the Lakes Project. This portion of Cass Lake Road will be closed until October 21st, and a portion of Cass Lake Road between Front Street and Stapleton Drive will also be closed Monday through Friday, but it will be open to traffic during the weekends. For more information, call the Road Commission of Oakland County or go to their website at rcocweb.org. 
The West Bloomfield Library is hosting the Exotic Zoo on Saturday, October 22nd, starting at 2 p.m. Watch, listen, and interact with animals, including a kangaroo, silver fox, and many more. For more information, call the library at 248-682-2120. Come and sway to traditional Brazilian and Latin American favorites, as well as European classics with the talented group Brazil and Beyond. They're appearing at West Bloomfield Library on Sunday, October 23rd for two showings, one at 3 to 4 p.m. and another at 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. For more information, call the library at 248 682 2120. Meet live bats from around the world and observe the many similarities and differences between these amazing mammals. On Tuesday, October 25th, come to Marsh Bank Park from 6.30 to 7.30 and see a leaf-nosed bat, a flying fox bat, and many more. Registration is required for both children and adults, and the cost is $8 for residents and $13 for non-residents. For more information, go to the West Bloomfield Parks and Rec website or call them at 248-451-1900. Join the Nutty Scientists for a special after-school event filled with exciting Halloween science. On Thursday, October 27th at the Aquatic Center from 6 to 7 p.m., you can experience hands-on interactive experiments and demonstrations sparking kids' curiosity and interest in science. The event is for ages 5 to 10, and to register, you can go to West Bloomfield Park and Rec or call their web at their website or call them at 248-451-1900. Coming to the Berman Center for the Performing Arts on Thursday, October 27th at 6 p.m. is the Sphinx Virtuosi, led by the Catalyst Quartet, and is one of the nation's most dynamic and professional chamber orchestras. Comprised of 18 of the nation's top black and Latino classical soloists, these alumni of the internationally renowned Sphinx competition perform as cultural ambassadors. The tickets start at $10, and you can register by going to theberman.org. If you enjoy wearing your pajamas, then head on down to the West Bloomfield Library on Thursday, October 27th at 7 p.m. to participate in an evening full of stories, songs, finger plays, and rhymes. And don't forget to bring your favorite stuffed animal. For more information, call the library at 248-682-2120. All kids are invited to the Orchard Mall for a Monster Mash on Friday, October 28th at 7 p.m. Children will have fun dancing the night away with chances to earn prizes for their costume. Now, this is a benefit for the Greater West Bloomfield Community Coalition, and it only costs $3 per child. Also, parents or guardians must attend, but do not need to purchase a ticket of their own. The first 50 kids to register are free, so go on to OrchardMallWB.com to sign up. And also for the kids, Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital has this creepy cool looking class where you get in on all the fun during Halloween. The event takes place on Saturday, October 29th from 10 till noon in their kitchen area. And be sure to wear your Halloween costume as well since this class will include fun interactive cooking along with delicious samples to try and take home. Also, you must be between the ages of 6 and 12 or 6 through 12 to participate. An early registration is required along with a cost of $25 per person. Then the West Bloomfield Library is having a Halloween Monster Mash later on Saturday, October 29th at 11 a.m. Also, wear your favorite Halloween costume and listen to music from a DJ and make some terrific Halloween crafts to take home. All ages are welcome, so be sure to stop on by. And English Gardens invites kids ages 3 to 12 to come and dress in your Halloween costume and bring a pre-decorated pumpkin for judging in their annual contest. The event takes place in their West Bloomfield location on Saturday, October 29th from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Come trick-or-treat on a safe and friendly half-mile paved trail. You can collect goodies from costume characters and treat stations. This will be held at Marsh Bank Park on Sunday, October 30th, with four starting time slots. So be sure to register with West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation soon, as the event will, most than like, will more than likely sell out. Children participating should be 3 to 12 years old, and the fee is $6 per resident and $8 per non-resident. For more information, go to the West Bloomfield Parks and Rec website or call 248-451-1900. And that's all for now, but if you're looking to find even more events going on in your neighborhood, then be sure to follow us at civiccentertv.com slash events and look up our events calendar or watch us here for more information on everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. Well, as we head into the break, stay tuned because afterwards I'll be talking with Annabelle Cohen, a local chef and owner of a catering restaurant here in West Bloomfield. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. I'm Kelly Waterfall for Civic Center TV. All around West Bloomfield, people are saying there's great, if not totally compelling programming on Civic Center TV. What's the best way to know when our newest shows debut? Become a member. It's absolutely free. We'll send you a regular newsletter with all the latest updates. Just go to civiccentertv.com and click the Members tab. 
Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Be sure to catch live coverage of Lakers sports, up-to-date information on local events, and of course, non-stop music on 89.3 WBLD, the all-new Lakes FM. For years, Civic Center TV has been bringing you live coverage of local municipal meetings. The meetings are now available on demand at civiccentertv.com slash meetings or watch the meetings again the following day on Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Jonathan Jackson, and joining me at the desk this week is Chef Annabelle Cohen, who owns a local catering business here in West Bloomfield called Annabelle Cohen Cooks Detroit. She's also an author, cooking instructor, and stylist, just to name a few things. So, Annabelle Cohen, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, we want to talk to you today a little bit about your catering business. How did you get it started? I actually started out of my house. I used to have, in my past life, I worked in advertising, and um, people would bring uh, foods into the, uh, into the building, the office. They'd bring donuts and, and uh, bagels, and I would bring you know, white chocolate mousse with raspberry sauce. <laughs> and I started bringing more and more foods. We'd have muffin Mondays and tube steak Tuesdays, and it was a whole lot of fun. And uh, I was asked to cater something at the office, at the ad agency where I worked. And I just loved it. So I quit my job. I went to work for a caterer to learn all their secrets. Mm -hmm. And I realized there really were no secrets. They just did a lot of good cooking in bigger quantities. Okay, okay. And then how did you end up you know, owning your own place here in West Bloomfield? How did that come Well, about? I um, started working actually out of my home. And uh, I worked for several years. And then I went back into my advertising career. Oh, okay. And yeah. then back into catering about four years ago or so full time. And uh, I worked out of a uh, religious building uh, for a, a little while. And then I needed more space, and I opened up uh, here in West Bloomfield. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Now, a uh, little fun fact about you that I read was you originally just made food for friends and family, not I did. really anybody else. Yeah, I catered but, for friends and family. Yeah, yeah. But now, you know, you're catering for, you know, businesses and events and gatherings and Weddings, all this. Weddings, bar mitzvahs, all exactly. kinds of Exactly. You're, you're definitely a busy person, to Very say the busy. least. <laughs> Luckily, and, I have a great team. Right, right. I mean, what is, you know, some of the items that are famous on your catering menu? We do all kinds of foods, but I'm a world traveler. I've been a lot of different places. So wherever, whenever I go someplace, I bring those flavors back with me and it, so, to sort of incorporate them into the foods. Okay. But this is a, you know, West Bloomfield is a very um, sort of a high-end clientele. Most of our clients, because I don't advertise, are in Bloomfield, Birmingham, West Bloomfield, Farmington Hills, this area. Mm. And because it's all word of mouth, uh, People like what they see and they want to see it again. So I haven't answered your question yet, <laughs> but um, I want to um, preface it by saying that most of our clients eat very, very healthy foods. So we don't do, we don't even own a deep fryer. We don't have a freezer. Everything is fresh. Everything nothing is deep fried. Okay. And uh, so some of the things that we do, we do sort of often. We do a lot of fish. People love salmon. We do salmon a hundred different ways. We do um, beautiful cuts of beef and lamb that people also really enjoy. Okay. And a lot, a lot of salads. I have to say I'm pretty well known for my salads because I, I love to make them. I love to eat them. Mm. So it's a lot of fun to be creative with the salads. We have a menu on our website and I hesitate to have people actually order from it <laughs> because we it's only a, a minuscule uh, amount of what, you guys of what actually, we actually do. Right, so right. In general, what we do is, if I was talking to you, if you were calling me to cater a party, mm -hmm. I'd ask you a million questions. Who's coming? What's the occasion? What are your favorite foods? What is your vision? Right. And then I try to make the menu um, customized to each client's uh, specific uh, desires Taste and desi tastes, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah, and lifestyle, yeah. too. Okay. I want it to fit who you are as well, not just who I am. I don't want to force feed you a certain... Uh, choose one from column A, one from column B type of menu. I want to make sure that the menus are customized to each um, lifestyle. To each yeah, lifestyle. it's, it's yeah. interesting you mentioned that because I was reading about you and you, lifestyle is important to you. It you is know, very important. You know, you are foodie, like right? you mentioned, and you're very passionate about food, but you're also involved in writing and yes. and, and uh, you know being involved in other forms of you know media and writing. Like I said, but you know, lifestyle. Can you talk to me a bit about that? How important food is just in general to you? Yeah. Well, it's not just to me, to, uh, to anybody, yeah, right? Yeah. My, um, my slogan, if so, uh, if, so to speak, is everybody eats. Mm 
Right. And it's true, everybody eats, it, but it's really how you eat and what you eat. You can eat foods that will bring you back to Italy, to a small town in Italy where you had pasta or pizza that you really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, you can eat foods that remind you of your childhood. You can eat foods that remind you of a, um, of, uh, a great restaurant that you really enjoyed. So that, that's all lifestyle, travel, uh, eating out, uh, your personal preferences, that's lifestyle. Right. So uh, again, I, my lifestyle, I can only talk about myself, is <laughs> I, I love, love to travel. So mm -hmm. I bring my, that sort of lifestyle into my cooking. Okay. And uh, so the, uh, the li I guess lifestyle, what is, I guess we should, I guess, I guess you bring an lifestyle. experience though. It's yeah, a, it's all about the experience. The, in general, everything. Yeah. I always say you can get a yeah. piece of chicken anywhere. Right. Right. But it's, it's all about the experience of, of uh, how we make the food look mm -hmm. and how the food is going to fit into your particular event. Uh, so I'm marrying my food with your particular lifestyle. I don't want people to disrupt their homes when, when we cater. I, I even tell people, don't move all this, don't move all that. <laughs> let's make it work within the space that you have. Let's, let's um, make it work within your personal uh, philosophies about food and how you like to serve things. Some yeah. people are super, super casual, and some people are super, super um, Maybe. fussy, I'm gonna say. I guess, or uh, uptight a little bit about their preference. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. a little bit, but it should be great no matter what it is. Exactly. And that's the message. That's, yeah. that's what's important. Exactly. Do your best. Exactly. <laughs> well, Chef Annabelle, thank you for sh sharing your vision and your message with us today. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. It's so fun to be here. Hey, well, we appreciate it. And everyone at home, pay, definitely pay attention to Chef Annabelle and, of course, her re uh, catering business, Cooks Detroit. It's Annabelle great. Annabelle Cohen Cooks Annabelle Detroit. Annabelle Cohen Cooks Detroit. There's, yeah, there's another yes. company. It's a similar name, but mine is Annabelle Cohen Cooks, Cooks Detroit. Cooks Detroit. Right, right. Uh, go to my website. Go to my Facebook page. Like me. Check her out. She's got a lot <laughs> to show you guys. Trust me. You don't want to miss out on this place. It's amazing. So thanks again. Thank you so much. Not it's so fun to be here. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, now it's time for another of our recurring segments called The Biz, where Splash reporter Katie Wozniak visits some local businesses within our area. Let's take a look at what she has for us this week. Pets are often members of the family, and their health and well-being is just as important as our own. In this edition of The Biz, we visited Scrubbers, a self-serve dog wash and grooming facility to learn about why pet hygiene is so important. Hygiene is important for our pets because it's important to keep our house clean, to keep your dog from smelling. It's also basic maintenance for your dogs. And keeping your pet clean is important for you as well. Hygiene is very important for pet owners so that their house is maintained and cleaned um, so that there's not hair all over the floor, um, so that their, uh, their floors aren't getting scratched up, so that the owner is not getting scratched up. When talking about pet hygiene, it's important to note that not all breeds require the same care. There are a lot of different breeds that need different maintenance. My bulldog Lola needs her face wrinkles cleaned out every night. She needs her ears cleaned on a regular basis and she has a tail pocket that needs to be medicated on a weekly basis. There are other dogs like Cocker Spaniels that tend to get yeasty and their skin and their ears can grow bacteria. There are dogs like Labradoodles and Golden Doodles that grow hair and they need to be brushed on a regular basis. Otherwise, when they go to the groomer, they tend to get shaved because they're matted. And then there are dogs like Labs that really just need a bath every eight to 12 weeks, get all that hair out, clip the nails, clean the ears, the basics. And we asked Nikki just how often you should bathe your furry friend. It depends on the dog. Um, I, I would normally recommend every six to eight weeks for the everyday pet. Dogs roll in stuff, dogs eat stuff. They, you know, um, it's just for maintenance purposes to keep a clean dog and a hair-free house. Don't think it's all soap and bubbles. We got the do's and don'ts of bathing your pup. Don't use hum human shampoo. Do not use dish soap. Do not use anything that does not specifically say it's for pets. A lot of shampoos and soaps have sulfates, have um, agents that will dry out the skin, that will give them infections. 
Um, people don't realize this. I would also say when you're bathing your dog, regardless what you're bathing the dog in, you have to make sure that you're rinsing the dog completely. Otherwise, a film on the dog forms and it can create infections. Um, a lot of people that bathe in the tubs will use um, cups to rinse their dog and a really hairy dog, you're not gonna get all that, all that soap out of the dog. Um, so it's very, very important to rinse your dog completely so that there is no residue left on your dog. When bathing your dog, I would say it's important for the temperature of the water to be between 75 and 95 degrees. You don't want it scolding hot, but you want it comfortable for you. A little um, lower temperature than what you would normally bathe in. Um, it's very important that you blow dry your dog if your dog has a lot of hair. A lab, a pit bull can get away with just a, a good towel dry. But with a thick coat, that's when hot spots form if they're left really wet um, or they go roll outside while they're wet. For Civic Center TV, I'm Katie Wozniak. Thanks, Katie. If you'd like to see even more episodes of The Biz, then you can visit civiccentertv.com slash the biz. Now let's turn to our other segment here on the show, our Person of the Week, where we acknowledge an individual within the community who is either helping or inspiring others. And this week's recipient is Sylvan Lake resident, Charlotte Gamble. Charlotte Gamble, also known as Char, is a longtime Sylvan Lake resident who was involved in multiple events throughout her neighborhood. For example, she's a member of the Sylvan Lake Home and Garden Club, which holds a tour every year within the city that includes both local and general residents. She's also in charge of the Sylvan Lake Citywide Garage Sale, an event which helps raise money for the Home and Garden Club, as well as other efforts within the community, and includes anywhere from up to 30 to 50 residents within Sylvan Lake. Char is also a part of the Sylvan Lake Ice Cream Social, where she bakes cakes and other sweets to the kids and for their families to enjoy. In a word, Char is simply one of Sylvan's most generous individuals and is always looking for new ways to help others, making her our person of the week. And if you happen to know someone who is providing a service to their community, then let us know by sending an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate those who are making a difference in our area, and we appreciate any and all suggestions. But that brings us to the end of our show today. As always, you can catch new episodes of The Splash every Monday at 6.30 and throughout the week for replays. And you can also look up previous episodes online at civiccentertv.com or follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook under Civic Center TV for more information. And for all our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and of course, West Bloomfield, I'm Jonathan Jackson, and we want to thank you for watching.